And for me as, uh, you know, working from the casting side, this was the dream team. I'm just so thrilled with how it came about. And first of all, getting Diane and Jeremy, that was my number one dream. And I thought, ah, oh, we won't. And we got them. Renner's performance is so good. He's unstoppable and he gets up. We're coming out with the bank. We're doubling down on uh, what we did on season one and season two is just gonna punch you in the face a couple more times. The inmates are running the asylum and you're giving up the goddamn key. This war is what I'm trying to stop. So I, I really loved the show. I was I was huge, huge, huge into the first season uh, when it was on, and I was psyched to see you as as the executive producer and 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 the co-creator because um, I followed your career for a long time, um, and I wanted to ask you. So the prison that it's set at, um, it does. I know that it was shot in Kingston. Was it based as well around that city in particular, or that's where I'm that? from? Yeah. So Taylor Sheridan was my acting coach. So going back 20 years, mm -hmm. um, you know, I always wanted to tell that story, you know, and when really it's about dreaming because Taylor would say, well, what do you want to do? And I went, I want to, you know, I, I obviously I'm a musician. I write characters and worlds in my songs. So I wanted to make movies and TV shows. And I always, since the time I was 17, I grew up in that town. So I remember being in the backseat of my mom and dad's car and looking up and seeing the guard tower and saying, is yeah. that Disneyland? And my mom and dad, that isn't Disneyland and you don't want to know. And that just tweaked my curiosity. I do want to know. And, um, and the Mike McCluskey character was based on a guy I grew up with in Kingston. So when I met Taylor and he, you know, he, this was the first script he ever wrote. I brought a printer over to his house and said, you can write this because I've watched you take it. He coached me in 75 episodes of Flashpoint. He coached me in the audition for oh. Durham County that got me to Montreal that I went to Lemiac, you know? So he, him and I go back a long, long way. And I'd never seen anybody be able to articulate and break down a character, a world, a story, a scene, motivation, the intimacy between characters, why they do things. He got me to speak on a different level that enabled me to transfer my skill set as a rock and roll singer on a stage to screen. And as a storyteller from writing haikus to full scripts. And he just, he's a teacher. So he brings out the best in you and he's empathetic and he, you know, he's demanding. And he just was one and and I am too. So once I dropped the printer and went, dude, you can do this. And he realized, holy shit, I can do it. And he did it in two days. And then the struggle was trying to sell it, you know, because then it would just took forever. And um, and on the road, you know, uh, he he sold Sicario, and then he sold. Um, Wind River. And he said, come and be in Wind River. We're going to sell this eventually. And we wrote four more episodes. And so, because we were like, you know, two guys sitting around and instead of doing our work, we talk about what about this world, this Kingston? And he's from Texas. So he brought this American feel. And I'm from Kingston. And I had these larger than life characters in my mind. The character I play, Ian, is based on a guy, I, uh, my best friend at the time I'd gone to school with who died when he was 27. So I brought that humor and it's named after him. And, um, there's so much uh, of a, the real world in it. And that's why Taylor is so good at what he does. I mean, he's just a world-class writer now, but he- Yeah, um, it's it's weird. People don't seem to, it, it, it's crazy his journey because he had this long career before he ever got really famous as a writer. And now he's like- Everywhere. History, right? I mean, he's, yeah. he, he's got it. It's, it's I mean- It, it is. Yeah. He's Taylor but <laughs> it's it's I mean I've witnessed this before because I grew up with Gord Downey um who yeah. was the singer for the tragic sure. hit you would know and um <laughs> of course I mean, and Gord got me here too because Gord when MCA went to sign the headstones they're going oh we don't know and Gord said I know I know Hugh he's been my friend since we were 16 and uh we'll la we'll have them open up for the tragically hip and we'll prove it to you. And then I've had this career that's forever. And so I knew Gord as a guy I used to sell pot to in high school, you know? And then we would, what we do is what Taylor and I do. We were so passionate about music that we would talk about bands and songs and what really, you know, or Leonard Cohen, and we'd take apart his lyrics and what makes that that? And how do you get there from here? Because there is no path forward. And, but yet the passion is so palpable 
when you're in those conversations that you feel it. And then you, it's not surprising later when you see things in that embryonic stage. And it's the same with, I, I originally started playing hockey with Doug Gilmore. He lived on the same street as me in Kingston. And, I, and him and I would play one-on-one -on, -one on this swamp and I watched him make it to the NHL and dominate. And so then I saw Gord do that and I continue. And with Taylor, it was, there's something in the passion that when it finally, you know, hit this, um, you know, Taylor verse that it is now, there's something that I'm not surprised because underneath it is a, a relentless curiosity and a, a passion to do it. And given the opportunity, he delivers. And that's why when I went to his house, I brought a printer. I mean, it really does feel like he's superhuman when, you know, I'm watching all these shows come out. And I, I, I'm a fan of all of his shows. I've been a fan of his since I saw Sicario. And just knowing his uh, backstory, too, he's, he's so inspiring to a guy like me. You know, I've been in this, in this game for 25 years. And, and actually, Taylor, you, you know, by casting me in this, he reignited my career. I mean, I was, I, I mean, I was one, one foot out when right. I, when I got this job, like, yeah, I, I'd been in for 25 years. This is going to be my 10th pilot. I think it, it would technically be my 10th pilot, fifth series. And, you know, I, I knew that I wanted to work with the best and I wasn't getting those shots. And so I had one foot out the door and this was like pretty much like the last, the last hurrah. And, and, you know, when Taylor tapped me to play this character, I mean, it, it really did reinvigorate everything. And I, I said to him, I was like, you know, you've, you've reignited my love for acting and being able to, you know, kind of come on, being able to come on this show and, and create at this level, at your level. I mean, it's, 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 it's the tip top, as you can, as you can tell by the, the, the finished product. The consequence of a riot is our new reality. We need a pecking order inside, gentlemen, so we have control on the outside. And that reality is chaos. The thing, that, the thing about Taylor Sheridan that I like is that you can never pin down exactly what his take on something is. Like, yeah. I, I really loved, there was an episode of Mayor of Kingstown last season that I thought was one of the best hours of TV I ever saw. And it was the one that related to the capital punishment, right? Where yes. he goes to see the guy being executed. Yes. I thought that was... For a violent show, that was that was an that was an amazing moment where you, where you were like looking at it, and I never looked at capital punishment that way before, and like how absolutely barbaric it seemed. Yes, and yeah, and that is the thing. I mean, where this is the most brutal, unfair. These are the most brutal, unfair places in the 21st century, and they exist in our society, and what that means, and bleeding out to the rest of it, and that's why he asks those questions, and he's able to go deeper, and we have the luxury to do that and that is what's interesting to me because it is unpredictable and that's what that's what keeps the passion um you know alive kingstown is not a city it's a town nothing stays hidden in a town yeah, and there's so much, you know, um, imagery and, and and stuff that grabs you right from the beginning. Um, it's funny because I watch it with my with my partner and she loves it, too. Um, but that I mean, that first scene, just the stuff with Michael Beach as, as the main guard who was assaulted and mm. his revenge mm -hmm. at the end. I mean, it's just it's the kind of like provocative stuff I feel like you don't really see on TV these days. And, and, and you know, it's a ball. I mean, show that's what we're that's what we're doing over here. I mean, that, that that's why I love this show so much, not only to, to be in it, but to watch it and experience it i mean this is kind of the audiences are so smart nowadays that you have to come with the realness with the rawness with the grit that all that the show brings and 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 we do it and after seeing episode one because i think you've probably seen episode two as well no not have yet you? oh you haven't seen it okay some people have and i'm like you've seen yeah, more yeah. than i have like I, I i'm just waiting on the sidelines for next sunday i just want to i just it's almost like, gosh, I wish they would just release them all so I could just binge this because I don't, you know, this town is so, Kingstown is so, uh, so crazy, but it's like, I want to be there. I want to know what's going on with these characters just as a fan. <laughs> you know the deal, Mike. 1049. You can't get the product in, can't get no money out. It's them guards, they're choking us to death. I have an idea. It's going to sting, but it will work. I'm going to trust you on this. 
I think probably my favorite thing about the show, though, is that it's a prison show that's not set in a prison. I mean, some yeah. of it is, but it just goes to show you how much more goes into it, though, afterwards <laughs> and how, you know, you may be out, but you're still kind of in in some ways, like Re Jeremy Renner's character yes. was like the shot caller, you know, yes. and how he's still that outside. And I yes. think that's fascinating to see those different facets, you know, and it how is, it works. It is, and that's the, um, that's the, that's the, that's the uncompromising and uncomfortable storytelling that you look for. That's why, you know, it's, it is the most dangerous show on television. It's the most, you know, Renner is, he has found another gear and he is, and I work with him and it's like, he's like a, it's like family and that, and what, he, similar to what I was saying about Taylor, he is such a decent human being and such a compassionate and caring person. And the gear that he finds to play this character is it's it's transformative. And I'm there with him and I've seen it on the page and I see it in editing and I see it as actors. And yet when you watch the um, show, it is um, it's like watching, you know, De Niro and Raging Bull. It is like, oh, my God, that is just a complete um, transformation. And, and, and I'm, you know, so close to it because it's the passion project of my life that to give it over to an actor, this guy is not just an actor. He is an unstoppable force in nature, you know? Renner's performance is so good. Yeah. I, I, I have this tendency when I watch, uh, you know, stuff, I, I, when I, I, as I hear them saying it, I kind of see it on the page. I don't know. It's just like, I have this like vi visual that goes on. I, probably like my analytical mind or whatnot and to 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 see his performance and realize what's on the page and then how what he brings to it it's just next level i mean the ideas that he's coming up with and, and the truth that he's bringing and the uh the humanity the the humanness to it um it, it, it really, it, it, I, you know, it's next level. It's really masterfully done. Yeah. Well, I mean, that brings me, unfortunately, to 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 yeah. his accident. You know, which I, I, I mean, I don't want to dwell on because I don't know much about it. But I mean, I'm very sad to hear that because I think he's. I mean, I'm, I hope that it seems like he's doing well, and you know, I, I think he's one of the best actors in the business. So I certainly he hope is. he bounces back. Well, he is, and I mean, I'm, and a testament to who he is. I mean, the next day I got. I think it was 25 hours later because I thought I'm going to go to the hospital. I'm going to fly and find him. And, um, and then I got a video and it was the most funny, profane video. It's like your brother. He's like, hey! And I'm like, oh my God, I've never been so relieved in my life and laughing after yeah. such a tragic uh, event. But that is what who he is. He's unstoppable and he gets up and to see, and it made me go, okay, he's going to be okay. You know, he's, um, and he's got great people around him and he's, and when you see him send a video, I was going to show it to you, but they won't let me. Um, when you see him send a video, that's just funny and right to the point and like, you know, profane in a comic sense, you know, he just, he just knows how to make you laugh and how to go, we're good. And, um, I'm just, I'm just so grateful that he's okay and is, and is on his way back and has hit the recovery road and, um, you know, uh, and I'm here just, to, you know, to present his work and the work we've done because he's coming back. And this is, you know, this is a guy and him and Taylor both who are on top of their game. And this season is exceptional. And so I want um, everybody to be aware of it. It's getting out of hand, Mike. You can't even control your own people. You want to start a war out here? You want us to stop me, police, Mikey? It's going to be some payback. I need you to continue trusting me. When you shoot a show like this, I, I have to ask, um, I'm curious, do you shoot it like a movie? Like, is it all done this season? Or because I because I because I know that sometimes the networks they'll go out and they'll shoot as it goes along, but it always feels like these are more almost like long movies to some extent. It, like it's well, that's a great so. question. That's a great question. And that's why they're so good, because that's how Taylor Taylor wants 10 10 hour movies. Yeah. And so do I. And then, you know. But part of that is the part we don't talk about, I'll just touch on briefly, is you have to build a team to do that. And you've got to build a team of really passionate, uh, relentless folks who are good at what they do, who who they don't want to take notes. They want to know what their job is. And Taylor's so good at a lead as a leader. And you got to find the talent because usually the talent will be gone on another show or yeah. and it's like how I knew Taylor was the dude 
to write it. And then we found, you know, and this is a Canadian, um, um, Stuart Campbell's our DOP. And he is the key on this show because his, you know, and I've shot great shows with great DOPs um, um, like Durham County and Montreal. You've got to, it's got to be exceptional. Otherwise, it's, you're not doing justice to the story. Can I say I'm going to do a thing? I think it's done. I mean, it must be interesting for you, though, because I feel like a lot, of, I don't know how much in this season, but last season, the two of you were really kind of like a pair, right? And it was almost like a two-hander between you two when it was your scenes, because you guys were the most, you know, were were kind of the anchors in some way for the show, especially during the riot. Um, and I was just wondering, what's it like working with that, with, with a guy like him, especially when he's kind of co-showrunner, right? And it's kind of his baby. Yeah, well, it's it's great to work with you. I mean, he's such a pro. And this show is you know from his mind he grew up in kingston ontario he knows this world inside and out and you know being side by side with him is you know one of the one of the perks of this job uh you know any time that i have any questions about you know hughes right there to just answer it or help guide me and um you know he he's he's so talented he's such, he's such a he he's he is such a a great visionary because he he's lived through a lot of this stuff like i mean this isn't just like imagination like you know he's seen some crazy shit through his life and um you know so just being it you know being there you know being with him hearing stories watching him work it's uh it's it it, it really is a pleasure you need time to heal what are we talking about i'm fine we're gonna make things right but brother you gotta be patient okay okay love you one thing that i've always thought was interesting about your character is that he is kind of you know his loyalties well i wouldn't say his loyalties but he's divided right i mean he's got his brother on the one hand he's got you know the cops on the other and then he's got his wife as well and he's got this new job which is you know supposed to be safer and, and, and more secure so i was just wondering if you could talk a little bit about your character's journey and what we could expect from him this season yeah, absolutely. I'm I'm so glad that 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 you felt that and that you picked that up because that's exactly what's happening. He's um Kyle is really grasping at straws this season. He's coming out of the prison riots feeling guilt and shame and pain, uh, you know, PTSD. He's uh, very upset with himself whether he knows it or not uh, of his lack of action during the prison riot. Um he caved. He caved at the end of, uh, you know, in the midst of all that chaos, he caved. And um, so he's really looking for redemption this season. And he's trying to do anything he can to get away from his feelings. And when you're dealing with somebody like that, uh, a lot of questionable behavior can be exhibited. And so you can, you can expect that from Kyle in season two. Can you tell me a bit what it was like shooting the riot sequences at the end of the last season? Because to me, like, as far as, you know, I mean, I put that, I, I put that against anything I've seen in any movies, you know, for, for a long time. Because I mean, just the, the, the insanity and the tension that they managed to sustain for so long and seeing what was going on with Hugh, you and Hugh and under attack. I mean, I was, I was kind of blown away by it. Could you talk a little bit about what it was like filming that whole kind of thing? You know, it, it's really hard to unpack that because there were so many different elements that prison riot spanned across two episodes. And so <laughs> and, and again, it's a testament to the writing and the filmmaking directing. Stephen Kay did a fantastic job, um, you know, putting it all together. He shot the shit out of that. I mean, yeah, yeah. I've liked him as a director for a long time, though, back when he was doing features as well. His Get Carter remake is kind of underrated, I find. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he he's he, he's he's tip top in my book, you know, a, a great person and um and so talented. You know, he, it's really important to be able to trust your, your director, and I trust him 100%. And there's more room, I think, for a wider variety of things with the advent of streaming. Um, can you talk a little bit about that as an actor and how it's maybe different from other TV stuff that you've done? Cause you said you've done a lot of pilots. Yeah. 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 I've done, done a lot of TV um, through the years. Um, 
streaming. Uh, yeah, I mean, getting to know that you have a full season that you're telling a story from beginning to end. I've never been on a show where they've canceled you in the middle, so I don't really, I don't really know what that's like. Uh, there have been, so, there has been some shows where there was some unfinished business, but nothing that it was, you know, n- you know, it it just happens. It's part of the business, you know. Yeah. But um, what I like about streaming is that. Uh, it's it's on the streaming service. It's on Paramount Plus, and it's being advertised. And so you film a season uh, of television, and then it's there. It's readily available for the audience to just pick up between then and the next season. And so I, my hope is that you know people have seen season one, they love season one, and they're coming in season two because season two really, really doubles down on what we did in season one the the punches are harder i mean and you get to you get to live with these people a little bit more you know i felt like season one was a great introduction to what this town is and who these people are but now you really get to live with them you and um and and i and i really think that you get to feel for them too i think i there was something really interesting you know season one it was like oh man like you know, Mike's just going through all this stuff and, you know, everybody's going through the stuff, but watching episode, episode one of season, season two, I was like, gosh, I, I love all these characters now. Yeah. Like, yeah, I, I, I can't wait for more. Well, it does feel like it pulls in a, a, a wide variety. I mean, I love it. My, my partner, she loves it. And then it's funny. My mom, who's 72, loves it. It's her favorite show. And my father. Also Hell yeah. <laughs> Such a Very wide good. variety of people, though, because you wouldn't think it would be. She finds it a little bit violent, but she likes it. <laughs> I think because it's well done. Again, yeah. audiences are smart these days. They yeah. they they need they need good content. They need to be. I mean, there's a lot of content out there, yeah. but how much of it is good? And you know, we we, you know, Kingstown is a show that is is just tip top in my book. 